Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, we're gonna take a look at my live streaming setup. We're gonna look step by step at each piece of gear that I use and how I set it up to get a very, very clean, nice looking live stream with great audio. So because I want a lot of the background visible, I need to move my desk more forward than I typically would have it. That way I can include uh, some of the, these elements right here instead of just getting kind of the posters. Now let's go ahead and talk about the hardware that I'm using. So as far as my computer right now, I'm currently using the Microsoft Surface Book 15 inch. So this is a new laptop from Microsoft. The main reason why I'm using this is because uh, OBS, which is the software that I'm using, uh, doesn't currently support my capture device with Mac. So Elgato didn't make Mac drivers for uh, this USB capture device. So I'm using a Windows machine uh, if you're using a different capture device, you can use a Mac, or what my plan is in the future is just to install Windows using Bootcamp on my Mac and run it under Windows. I'm currently reviewing this machine, so you guys will see a video on this in the future, uh, but it does a great job. Uh, the laptop itself is awesome. The one thing that you do want is you want something that has a decent processor because when you're encoding the video or you're live streaming, it has to take in all that data from your camera and the CPU has to process all of it. So if you're using something that's really weak, like a MacBook Air, an Ultrabook, or like a really old computer, you're gonna have dropped frames. This thing has an i7 quad core processor built in, uh, so it's definitely able to keep up with the 1080p 30 frames per second that I'm streaming at. If you're gonna do any 4K streaming, you're gonna need more processing power, or it's gonna be maxing out uh, your machine. For my capture device, I'm using the Elgato HD60. It's very simple to use. You just need to plug in your camera to the HDMI input and then plug the USB into your computer. So I wanted something that was very simple and easy to use that didn't require a full desktop computer or an actual uh, rack mount system or anything like that. Something quick and easy and very inexpensive as well. Of course, there's gonna be links to all of this stuff in the video description below. One downside, like I already mentioned, is they don't have Mac drivers for this capture device, so you could look at some alternatives, um, but this is the one that I'm using. As far as my camera, I'm using a Sony a7R 3 for a few different reasons that I'll cover in just a second. You don't really need a very high-end camera to get a good image on your live stream, but you do want to consider a few different things. First off, you have to have a HDMI output and it has to be a clean output. Some cameras will only output an HDMI signal with all your menus and all your little icons. Obviously, you don't want that in your stream. The next thing is to make sure that your camera doesn't overheat. If you're gonna be using something like the Sony a6000, which can overheat, even if you're not recording internally, um, if you're doing like a live stream that's an hour long, maybe a little bit longer, or you have a hot room that you're in, it's you know the summer, your camera could overheat and shut off even if you're not recording internally at the same time. Now, most cameras don't really have an issue with this if you're not recording internally, even like the a6300, which can overheat, but if you're just putting out HDMI output, it doesn't have to do as much processing. Uh, just make sure, do some tests, and if you're gonna be live streaming, it's not gonna shut off halfway through. The last thing is the battery. This Sony a7R 3 will go for roughly two and a half, three hours when you're live streaming, but something like an a6300 can only run for roughly an hour before the battery dies. So if you're gonna do long live streams, keep that in mind, and you may need to have an external power source with a dummy battery plugged in to do some of the longer live streams. The main reason why I really like this camera for live streaming is because I have this 28 millimeter f2 lens, which is full frame. So you have quite a wide angle or field of view and it's a f2. So when I'm sitting close to it, I have some nice blur, even though you see so much of the background. And this is something that's hard to emulate with APS-C or micro four thirds sensors, that really wide look, that perspective, while still maintaining some background blur. So that's something that I really wanted for my live streams and I've achieved it with this camera. Now the other reason is because this thing provides a nice 1080p image. Some of the other Sonys, like the a6500, the a7R2, the previous ones had a lot of aliasing and the image was quite soft. So with this guy, even though you're shooting in 1080p, we have quite good detail and you guys have mentioned that in my live streams. Now to finish off, let's talk about the microphone. So here I have an Audio-Technica AT2020. It's an XLR microphone, and then I have the stand that it's on that's adjustable, and then this kind of shock mount, so if there's any vibrations, it's not gonna come through in the audio. This guy is roughly $100, and then add on just a little bit for these accessories, and I'll have the links in the video description. This is my voiceover microphone. I really like the sound quality, especially for that price point. Um, and then that is going into my Zoom H6. Now this guy is definitely overkill if you're just using it for live stream. If you're gonna use it for other purposes, it's an excellent recorder. I've had this for a few years. Uh, it's very capable, very flexible. 
and you're able to take this and plug it directly into your laptop and get all the audio from here. It works like a converter into your laptop. So you don't need a dedicated um, analog to digital converter plugging in, into your computer. Now, if you don't wanna spend this much money, you can go with something like the Zoom H4n or the Zoom H5, which is less expensive and it'll still use XLR, allowing you to use a microphone like this or a shotgun microphone. Or if you wanna save some money, you can even get the Zoom H1. And I know a lot of you guys have a Zoom H1 and you can buy those used for maybe 50, 60 bucks now. And then use like a lavalier microphone that you can clip on plug it into the Zoom H1 and plug that directly into your laptop or your computer and that will also get you the signal that you need. And it's gonna be really high quality because you're using the preamps internally instead of grabbing like a lav mic and plugging it into your laptop and it's gonna be, uh, it's not gonna sound as good. It's gonna be a lot more compressed. The preamps are a lot worse inside a laptop than something that's gonna be dedicated. Now let's set up our camera. Even though I'm not gonna be recording internally, I still wanna put an SD card in there because I don't like seeing that pop-up that says no SD card and I just don't wanna take any risks. And I typically record in 4K 24 frames per second, but since I'm gonna be streaming in 1080p, I'm just gonna go in and switch my settings to 1080p 30 frames per second. I wanna see something like this. I'll fine tweak it afterwards once I sit down. Now let's go ahead and plug in our capture device and the other end is going to go to the laptop. Now let's plug in our XLR microphone. I'm going to route the cable this way so it's not getting in my way and a USB cable to our zoom. I'm going to plug that guy in and on these zooms when you're going to be connecting it to your computer it's only going to use like channel one and two. So I'm going to flip it from my standard channel four, which is for uh, setup for voiceovers to that side. Now let's go ahead and turn on our Zoom H6. When it turns on, it's going to notice that it's plugged into USB. We're going to select the audio interface, stereo mix, and PC Mac, which is going to feed power from the laptop. If you want to use the built-in battery power, you select the second one. And there we go. So now this knob is turned up too high, roughly around here. And as far as my mic placement, I try to keep it right over here off to the side. That's because I got annoyed using a pop filter and having it be in front of me. And also when the mic's in front of you, you're kind of blocking your face, which you don't really want that. So having it off to the side, kind of pointed at your mouth, works just fine since it's a mono mic. It doesn't pick up a stereo mix. And using this setup, I'm not getting any popping or any other noises. So the audio sounds quite good. Now let's get into the software. I'm using OBS Studio, which is free. It is a little bit difficult to use, but because it's free, there's so much different tutorials out there that you can follow. After a few seconds, my actual video image showed up here, and I set this up pretty simply. In sources here, I have my display capture set up if I wanna show something on the display. Um, so if you're gonna add a new source, you just click plus over here and select what source you want. So here's display capture, and then we have like video device, so here I have my video capture device. I'm gonna go into the settings. I selected Elgato Game Capture HD from the device type. And then I just set it to 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second. Other than that, I did not change anything. And then on the audio input, it just gave me default, whatever is plugged into or defaulted on the laptop and the Zoom H6 right here. And on this next section over, the mixer, I took the audio all the way down. This is the video capture device's audio, so whatever the camera is capturing. And my audio input capture, which is H6, is turned uh, all the way up. Now one issue that we ran into is the audience was hearing the audio before the video. So the two were out of sync. That's because the audio gets into the computer faster than the video does through the capture device. Uh, to fix that, you have to go into the settings and add a delay to the audio. So to do this, depending on your device, you're gonna have to do a different delay. Um, for us, it was a thousand milliseconds or one second. Um, and you, what you wanna do is just do an unlisted stream and have somebody else helping you out in another room where they can be viewing the live stream. So you can just send them a link to that. 
And then the best way is just to clap and then they can see when they hear the clap and then when they see the clap. And it's just kind of like a process of trial and error. Maybe at first do a thousand milliseconds. And then if the audio is behind the video instead of ahead of it, you can adjust it by 200 milliseconds or so until you get it right. I also created a couple hotkeys. So for start streaming, it's F1, stopping is F2. And then down here under scenes, to hide display capture, I hit escape. So if I wanna you know, show something on display, I can turn it on and then hit escape to close it. You can also set show video capture device. So let's set that to one. I'll apply that. And then now I can toggle through. Now the last change that I had to make was under settings, output, and the encoder. So the default is set to NVENC, and unfortunately that just kept crashing OBS as soon as I started streaming. So I switched that to hardware QSV, and I honestly don't know the difference. It's just a different way of it encoding, I guess. And that fixed all my issues, and now the stream works just fine. Right above that, you see the video bit rate. Um, I think 3,500 is really good, but this depends on your upload bandwidth. So say you have 5,000 upload or five megabit per second upload, you don't want this set to 3,000 because if anybody else uses the internet and starts uploading something, you're gonna have drop frames or you can even lose your connection. So you wanna be a little bit conservative with this number. I'm gonna raise this up to 3,000 because I think my internet can handle it. Now the last step with software is to go into YouTube in your creator studio and I use the stream now setting. Here you guys can see the thumbnail for my last stream. You can select your thumbnail right here. And then you can fill in your title, your description, um, you can enable monetization, and you can also select a stream now, or you could uh, schedule the next live stream, which is what I suggest. And then just below that, uh, we have our encoder setup. So uh, for OBS, you're gonna grab this stream key. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, go back over to OBS, hit my settings, go to stream, and in here, I can paste it. Other than that, as soon as you hit an OBS uh, to start streaming or your hotkey, it's gonna start sending a signal to YouTube and then uh, you're gonna start streaming. So it's as simple as that. Now you can also go into your stream options here. Enable DVR, that allows people to pause your live stream and then keep watching it instead of uh, having to skip and miss a section of it. And you can select your latency. I like low latency so I can have a conversation with you guys. If you select ultra low latency, which is almost real time, you're not gonna be able to use the DVR, which people like to use the DVR option. I'm using a smart plug with an Amazon Echo to very easily and quickly control my lights. I'm gonna have a link to that in the video description. So Alexa, turn on Apple. She doesn't wanna do it on camera. Alexa, turn on Apple. There we go. So our lights are on. I'm gonna move my main key light uh, closer to me. So this is the Aperture 300D, which is way overkill for this. The 120D is definitely a much more reasonable option, unless you already have one of these lights and you're using it. I'm gonna lower it a little bit here. And on this guy, I am using a grid with a small soft box because I wanna minimize the amount of spill on my background, since I want kind of a more moody type of look. And that way, with a small soft box, I'm gonna get fairly soft light. With the grid, it's not gonna spread everywhere. And that way, I get some separation from the background, both with my shallow depth of field and with my lighting. All right, guys, so this is the final outcome. You're looking through the recording done through my live streaming setup through OBS from the A7R3 with that 28 millimeter F2 lens uh, through this microphone right here and using the lighting setup that I showed off. Hopefully you guys like this kind of a look. I know I've gotten a lot of compliments from it. We have a more cinematic look than you typically would get and you have some different interesting lights in the background, a little bit of blur between myself and the background, which looks quite nice. And this is a setup that I've wanted to do for a while and I finally achieved the look and the quality that I wanted to get. Once again, there's gonna be links to all the gear that I talked about and that I use in the video description below so you guys can go and check that out. If you guys have any questions, you guys can ask in that comment section. I will do my best to answer those. And make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you're new and enable those notifications if you've been around for a while so that you guys don't miss out on the next live stream, which I will be doing as soon as I finish this video. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video or the next live stream.